What does half the human population have in common with these? Toothed whales, which include orca or killer whales, are one of the few species of animal who live long enough in the wild to experience the menopause. Other wild animals tend to keep reproducing until they die. But for us women, and these whales, there's a much longer period of what biologists charmingly call our post-reproductive lifespan. Now, the theory of evolution tells us that the characteristics which make us better adapted for survival and reproducing are the ones that will get passed on to the next generation. So from that point of view, menopause doesn't seem to make any sense. Because once you've lost your fertility, it should be the end of the line. That's got me thinking, what is the point of the menopause? I thought I was having a nervous breakdown. Crying, fear, sadness, low mood. I've got him for any way, but it was off the scale. And also feeling you can't tell anyone. Let's start with what might look like the most straightforward explanation for the existence of this thing, which can cause women such an array of difficult symptoms. As we all know, we humans are living for longer than ever before, thanks to advances in medicine and our overall quality of life. So maybe we reproduce up until the point where we're supposed to end our natural lives and actually we're artificially enhancing the length of our lives. But that's not true when you look at these orcas. They cease reproduction halfway through their lives and there's not been any kind of investment in ocean-based healthcare, so it's just thrown open that question completely. There's also an argument that having babies past a certain age isn't a good idea anyway. And it's the idea that because it's medically more dangerous for both mother and child to keep having children into your 60s and beyond, we've evolved a way of stopping that happening. But recent research suggests that from an evolutionary perspective, those dangers are not statistically significant enough to justify such a dramatic response. So there's something else going on. And our friends, the toothed whales, have helped us understand what that might be. In years when the fish stocks are very low, these older females will really take the lead and guide the family to the pockets where they know the food is. The males that have their mum with them at their side get into fewer fights and have fewer scars on their bodies. Groups that have post-reproductive females, their grandchildren, their grand offspring actually have a better chance of survival. So there's clearly something going on in that family dynamic that means that there is a really fundamental role in post-reproductive life. And it's the grandmothers of the human family who may hold the key to the menopause mystery. Research has shown that having a grandmother nearby, an older and wiser female figure who can help with caring, significantly improves the survival rate of her grandchildren. This has led to what's known as the grandmother hypothesis. The argument is that it's actually a better investment to ensure the survival of your descendants than to keep trying to have children yourself. A connected theory also says that if grandmothers kept having their own children at the same time that their grandchildren were being born, there would be too much competition for the same resources. For me, having children and grandchildren of the same age running around together would frankly be too exhausting to even think about. It links into so much about social bonds, family lives, reliance on each other, wisdom and knowledge, and our lifespan that's really fundamental to us as human beings and to how we're connected to other people. The truth is, we're not 100% sure why menopause has evolved. But what's heartening is that there's a much greater understanding of it, and women are becoming more empowered to access support if they need it. It feels like we've almost just woken up to how much impact menopause has on lives, but it doesn't impact just the individual, it impacts everybody around them. We know there are short-term effects of menopause on an individual in terms of symptoms, and they can be helped, but there's also massive long-term implications of hormonal lack. Women exert the largest influence on the coming generations, and if we look after women, we look after the coming generations. Women are living longer, healthier lives after menopause, which then in turn could mean they can use their vast wisdom and experience to benefit wider society. Stop bleeding, more leading. What we need is support from the medical profession, more understanding from workplaces, 
and generally much more awareness. Menopause shouldn't be taboo or a dirty word. So maybe what really needs to evolve now is society's attitudes. That's what women need. We need support in this phase of life. We are going to reclaim our life and like we're going to go forward and we're going to live it. This is the next chapter, ladies. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, be sure to check out these videos next. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get a notification each time we upload a new video.